My focus on this channel is dragons and mostly dinosaurs, but I also talk about other extinct animals like mammals. Today we're looking at an animal that is extinct, but so recently it almost feels modern. And that's what I think makes it a suitable animal to talk about today, which is World Wildlife Conservation Day. The thylacine was an Australian marsupial predator. It's also called the Tasmanian tiger because of its stripes, and the Tasmanian wolf because of its canid appearance. The reason we know it was striped is because we have photographs, videos, and even pelts of it. The last one died in captivity in 1936, so the thylacine became extinct in our time. Humans played a huge role, hunting, culling, introducing disease, and destroying habitats. The usual suspects, in other words. This model measures about 8 centimeters or 3.15 inches without the tail, and the thylacine was 1.1 to 1.3 meters or 3.6 to 4.3 feet, which makes this about 1 to 15 scale. Including the tail, it's about 11.5 centimeters or 4.5 inches. It's really small. The only thing I can find that's close is my Collecte Aeneosaurus. And here's a reference with something you might be more familiar with, this reborn baby Stegosaurus. Despite the small size, it's nonetheless very nicely detailed. Here in the head, you can see why it's often used as an example of conversion evolution, with a definite wolf-like appearance. The facial hair is very finely detailed, and the paint application is really nice, with shades as well as nice transitional fades to white around the eyes, in the ears, and around the mouth. The nose and eyes are a very shiny black, and the eyes in particular have a liquid look to them, which goes with descriptions of them being large, full and black. Here the mouth is wide open, and it's not just for purposeless drama, as I think it is to showcase a feature of the thylacine, its ability to achieve a really wide gape of 80 degrees. A study by Atard et al. in 2011 using FEA showed that in fact the thylacine had a skull poorly suited to withstand forces associated with struggling prey. Now in these models here, compared to the Tasmanian devil and the tiger quoll, you can see the thylacine on the right, associated with the stress curve with the red squares. On axial twisting, pulling back, lateral shaking, and up and down, you can see that the stresses are highest in the thylacine. So it seems that one justification used for its culling, taking sheep, might very well be completely wrong, and the thylacine was more suited to taking down small, agile prey. The white gape was suggested to be more for a threat display, or perhaps a retained plesiomorphy. And down the body, you'll see that tawny coat, then those distinct stripes. Again, see how finely detailed the fur is, and also how nicely coloured. The boundaries of the stripes are very naturalistic, without that painted on feel. And you can see here the different shades of colour in the shoulders, the sides, the arms. Now moving to the rear, you'll no doubt notice this very interesting detail here. Uh, no, it's not a big peepee. -pee. It's actually the tail and rump of a joey. 
This is a marsupial and not a placental, and pouches are of course the distinct feature of the infraclass. The pouch you can see extending here, and apparently they could hold up to four joeys, in which case the pouch would sling almost to the ground. It's really a very nice touch that both teaches you about the animal, but also reminds you that these were real living creatures, with their own challenges and families not very unlike us, and that, thanks to us, neither adult nor joey will ever be seen again. There have been reports of sightings throughout the years, but so far nothing has panned out. We all like mystery and the allure of cryptozoology entices us with the thought that there are still undiscovered animals out there. But perhaps with the thylacine, it also has to do with the collective guilt we feel about what we've done, and the thought that if indeed some of this magnificent animal still survives, we can somehow make amends and repair the situation. So, about the theme of this video, I won't evangelize and pontificate about wildlife conservation. More erudite and eloquent people have spoken about it, and you can easily find videos of this online. But for those who don't know much about it, or think that we can't do anything because we don't own sausage-shaped vehicles, I say just two words. Become aware. Make an effort to read up. Start anywhere. Learn about biodiversity, ecosystems, illegal poaching, ivory, shark's fin, animal trafficking. Check out Team Seas. To many of us working in a high-speed, fast-moving world, wildlife is a non-issue. And just becoming aware there's a problem is the first step. Because by taking that first step, without any pressure you have to do anything, you develop an interest, and the more you learn, the more you'll discover the little things you could do to play a small but significant part. When I look at video footage, it makes me sad to think that we're responsible for the extinction of this magnificent animal. But it's not just this animal we've brought harm to. Many animals were just minding their own business, living life naturally, until we invaded the territory. And we never made the effort to try to coexist. I hope we can try. Now I'll put links to videos and websites that you can visit to find out more below, and next time I'm getting back to one of my regular reviews, so I'll see you soon.